In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make the Truly Beanie, which matches the Truly wrist warmers, which are on my channel. I'm going to be using this yarn today to demonstrate. This is the Truly yarn, which is a hand dyed yarn. And it's a 100% superwash merino in Aran weights. I'm going to be using a five millimeter crochet hook. I'll leave all of the details in the description box of what I'm using today. But with this yarn, I'm going to be using a five millimeter crochet hook. You'll also need a pair of scissors, a darning needle, and also a pom-pom if you wish as well. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to be starting with the brim of the hat and then working our way up. So for this project, you're going to need a main color, which I suggest is a solid color, and then a contrast color, which you can use as a speckled um, yarn like this, or you could just use another solid color. It's totally up to you, but we're going to start off with the main color. So what we want to do here is we want to create our slip knot and you can do this in whichever method you prefer. Go ahead and insert your crochet hook and we're going to start off by chaining 10. So that's yarn over, pull through, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and 10. If you want the brim of the hat to be a bit deeper, you can do more chains. So we're going to do row one. We're going to uh, do a slip stitch into the second chain from the hook. So not the one that's on the hook. We have one and two. We'll go into that chain, yarn over and pull through. Make sure you're not um, pulling too tight on your chain or on your slip stitch into the next stitch yarn over and pull through for a slip stitch. And then you're going to do this all the way across. So at the end of this row, you'll have nine stitches. So you're just going to work your way all the way to the end. And then we're going to do row two. Now row two is what we're going to repeat for the whole of the brim. You're going to turn your work and chain one. That chain one does not count as a stitch. We want to locate this very first stitch just here, but instead of working into the stitch, we're going to only work into the back loop at this point. And we're going to do a slip stitch again. So we'll go into that stitch and what you want to do is you just want to, at this point, make sure that this loop here on the hook isn't too baggy. So we just pull on our tension slightly just to bring that in, but not too tight. And then you're going to pull through and pull through. You'll find the next stitch and go into the back loop only. And pull through and pull through. And you're going to continue like this all the way across. So you want to count to make sure that you've got those nine stitches in this row because it can be easy to lose your last stitch. So my biggest tip when working a brim like this using um, slip stitches is count your stitches to make sure that you're not losing any. So work all the way across and then into that very last stitch. And then we're going to chain one and turn and we'll do exactly the same going back the other way. So that's a slip stitch into each stitch. You'll have nine stitches in your rows and you're going to work this until you have one long thin piece, which is going to measure 18 inches when unstretched. So we, we are not going to um, stretch this when we're measuring. We're gonna measure it 18 inches unstretched. So go ahead, pause the video, work your the brim of the hat, and then meet me back once you're ready. Okay, so once you've done your brim with your slip stitches, 
um, and it measures 18 inches for an adult. We're going to fold our short ends together so that your hook is on this side and then we're going to slip stitch into the back loop or into the underside of this uh, chain that we've worked. So we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and nine. So what we want to do is find the back loop of this first stitch on the side facing you and then we're going to go into the underside of the chain on the opposite side. So we're just going to slip stitch that together and then we're going to go into the next the back loop only of the next stitch and then into the underside of the next chain and slip stitch and you're going to work this all the way across until those two short ends have been joined together. So go ahead and do that and then meet me back once you're ready. So I've now joined that all the way across and I've connected it up. Um, sometimes the first round does look a bit larger because you've got your slip stitch or your chain but once you actually place them together it all matches up fine. Now what we're going to do is we're going to rotate our work so that we can work along the row edges. So the row edges are here. We're going to go ahead and chain one and we're going to start the actual hat section. So for row one here, we're going to, as I say, chain one, and this does not count as a stitch. And we're going to double, double crochet evenly around, placing the stitches in the grooves or the valley of the, um, the brim of the hat. So when we look at our stitches here, if we pull it apart, we have our peaks and our valleys. So the valleys are the ones that have set back. And we're going to do a double crochet in each one of those, which is a UK term in the US. This is known as single crochet. So I'm gonna do my very first one in this space next to where my chain one is. And I'll do a double crochet. If you want to pop a stitch marker in that first stitch, you can go ahead and do so. Then we're going to miss the next row end and find the next one just here and do a double crochet into there. You want to make sure that when you are going into these um, valleys of the stitches that you're trying to catch a couple of loops on the row end so that it's nice and secure. And you want to aim to have, well, you want to have 71 stitches all the way around. So count the amount of stitches that you are doing. If you need to add two, into um, one valley, then go ahead and do that. Or if you need to double crochet two together, so that would be um, going into the next stitch, for example. I'd probably do this on towards the end of the hat, but if you wanted to um, reduce your stitches, you could go into this next stitch, yarn over, pull through, and then into the next um, end of the next row and yarn over pull through two and that just um, takes two stitches into one. So as I say you're going to double crochet evenly around and you want to end up with 71 stitches in your round. So pause the video, work those stitches and then meet me back once you're ready. So once you've worked your way around and you've double checked that you have 71 stitches, you want to join with a slip stitch into your first stitch. And then we're going to go ahead and move on to the second round. So for the second round, we're going to chain one, which does not count as a stitch. And we're going to do double crochet into the base of the chain one and around. So because this doesn't count as a stitch, we're going to double crochet into that first stitch. Mark your stitch if you need to. And then you're just going to do one double crochet into each stitch all the way around. Again, just double checking that you have those 71 stitches because that will be important when it comes to doing um, the patterned rounds. 
So go ahead, work your way round and then meet me back once you're ready. So once you've worked your way round for round two, you're going to join with a slip stitch into that first stitch. And then for round three, we're going to do exactly the same. So chain one and then double crochet all the way round. The only difference here is we're going to be changing to the contrast color in our last stitch. So go ahead, pause the video, work until you have one stitch remaining and then meet me back once you're ready. Okay, so I've worked my way all the way around. I've done my last stitch here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to begin my slip stitch to finish this round. However, instead of pulling through the main colour, I'm going to grab my contrast colour, make a loop and pull that through instead. I can now pull down on the main colour again in order to um, tighten up those stitches. Now we do not need to fasten off that main colour we're actually going to be floating that up the work. So now for round five, what we're going to do is chain one, which does not count as a stitch. I'm going to leave my main color just um, dropped towards the back. And I'm gonna lay down the tail end just to crochet that in a little bit so that we can finish off sewing in those tail ends at the end. I usually like to crochet in about an inch and then finish off with sewing in. So now what we're going to do is do a pattern repeat and this pattern repeat is going to be double crochet into the next stitch, double crochet into the next stitch and then we're going to find the next double crochet and go two rows below which is just here and we're going to do a front post treble which is a front post double crochet in the US We'll yarn over, we'll go from the front to the back of the work and then the back to the front, pushing that stitch forwards and then work our treble crochet. So pull through, yarn over, pull through and yarn over, pull through. We'll then miss that stitch that this stitch sits over. So this one just here. And then we'll do a double crochet, a double crochet, and then we'll do another front post treble crochet. So now that we've got this first one here, we can kind of see the next two stitches, one, two, which we've worked over. And then we know that we can go around this stitch in order to do that treble crochet. Skip a stitch, double crochet, double crochet, and then front post treble. This is the hardest of the, ra the rounds. Um, once we actually start building this pattern, it gets much easier to work into. So you're just looking at missing those two stitches, two rows down, and then working that front post treble crochet. So this is what it's going to start to look like. You're going to repeat that all the way around, double crochet, double crochet, front post treble crochet around the double crochet from two rows below and then meet me back once you meet yourself at the beginning. Okay, so once you've worked your way round and you've done your last front post treble crochet, we're going to join with a slip stitch into that first stitch. We're then going to chain one and then this round is really easy. We're going to double crochet into each stitch all the way around. So one double crochet into each stitch all the way around. And you are going to have 71 stitches in this round. So go ahead, pause the video, work your way round, and then meet me back once you're ready. So once you've worked your way around doing your one double crochet in each stitch, we're going to join with the slip stitch, however, we're going to be changing back to our main color. So you want to insert your hook and then you're going to drop the contrast color, pick up the main color and float that up. So floating up just means bringing it up from the row that we were on previously. So you don't want to pull too tight on that because it can distort your stitches. You just want to bring it up so that it um, sits nicely ready to start our stitches for this round. 
So now we're on round seven. We're going to chain one, which does not count as a stitch. And then we're going to do our pattern repeat again. So we're going to do two double crochets, one and two. And then this time when we do our front post treble crochet, we already have a stitch there to do this stitch around. So we're going to yarn over and then go behind this stitch to push it forwards and then complete our treble crochet. And then it just sits nicely on top of this one. We then miss the stitch that this sits over and then we do our two double crochets. Double crochet, double crochet, and then front post treble crochet around that front post treble from two rows below. Ignore the stitch that we've just worked over and then continue the pattern repeat. Double crochet, double crochet, front post treble crochet. Miss the stitch, double crochet, double crochet, front post treble crochet. So you'll work your way all the way round, doing that pattern repeat, and then you'll finish on this front post treble crochet just here, and then meet me back for the next round. Once you've gone round with that pattern repeat, we're going to join with a slip stitch, chain one, and then we'll do another round of double crochet. So double crochet in each stitch all the way round, you'll have 71 stitches again in this round. Our stitch round uh, count doesn't change at this point. So go ahead and work those double crochets. And then when we get back to the last stitch, we're going to change colors again. So work your way around until you've done your last stitch and then meet me back once you're ready. So once you have worked your way round, you're going to join with a slip stitch. However, this time we're going to change to the contrast color. So floating up that contrast color and chaining one to start this next round, which is exactly the same as these rounds that we've just done. So rounds seven and eight, and you will continue repeating this until you have done 18 rounds. So this is round five, then we have six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. So you're going to repeat rounds seven and eight, changing color every two rows. So when you've done your uh, double crochet round, you'll then change your color until you have 18 rows. So pause the video, continue working that pattern repeat until you've got to your 18th round and then meet me back and I'll show you how to continue on. So now that we've done up to round 18, uh, we can go ahead and um, move up to round 20. So we're going to change to uh, the main colour and chain up one. And we're going to do another two rounds of this same pattern repeat, but we can now go ahead and snip off our contrast color. And again, I'm going to lay that down and just start to crochet it in a little bit um, for about an inch or so, and then I can weave in the rest with my crochet, with my darning needle. So again, exactly the same as what we've been doing, double crochet, double crochet, and then raised treble front post around that raised treble front post from two rows below. So you'll do this round and then you'll also do the um, round of double crochet and then meet me back and I'll show you or I'll tell you what the instructions are following this. Okay, so once you've done that round 19 and 20, we're ready to do um, nine rounds of double crochet. So we're just going to build out this section now. So for rounds 21, which is this round here, to 29, we're just going to do one double crochet in each stitch all the way around. I would highly recommend that you uh, mark your first stitch. If you have trouble finding that first one, that you count 
each of your stitches in every round you'll have 71 and that you make note of which round that you are on so that's rounds 21 which I'm doing now through to 29 one double crochet in each stitch joining with a slip stitch um, to end each round and chain one which does not count as a stitch so pause the video work those rounds and then meet me back once you're ready so now that you've built those rounds we're going to go ahead and start to decrease our rounds um, so we have 71 stitches and then we're going to actually decrease to 70 stitches in this next round so to do our decrease rounds we're actually going to join with a slip stitch and then we have 71 stitches right now but what I'm going to do is I'm going to decrease this to 70 stitches just for this round so for round 30 and I'm going to do a double crochet two together in this first stitch so you go into the stitch yarn over pull through two loops on the hook into the next stitch yarn over pull through three loops on the hook and then yarn over pull through all three so we've just decreased this round by one so now we're going to work all the way around this round and you will end up with 70 stitches so go ahead pause the video work your way around and then meet me back in a moment once you've done that round so round 30 we're going to join with a slip stitch and then now we're going to decrease this round to 56 stitches and to do that we've got a pattern repeat so we're going to chain one which does not count as a stitch and then we're going to do three double crochets one two and three and then a double crochet two together so into the stitch don't finish off that double crochet into the next stitch yarn over pull through three loops on the hook and yarn over pull through all three and then start that pattern repeat again one two three double crochets and then double crochet two together and you'll repeat that all the way round you will have 56 stitches in this round so go ahead pause the video and then meet me back once you're ready at the end of round 31 we're going to join with a slip stitch and then for this next round we're going to decrease to 42 stitches so we're going to chain up one and our pattern repeat is going to be two double crochets so one and two followed by double crochet two together so that's double crochet double crochet double crochet two together you will do that all the way around and you will end up with 42 stitches pause the video and then meet me back at the end of this round at the end of this round we're going to join with a slip stitch and then chain up one and for round 33 we're going to reduce to 28 stitches so the way that we're going to do this is do double crochet followed by double crochet two together so nice and easy double crochet double crochet two together all the way round and you will end up with those 28 stitches go ahead pause the video work your way round and then meet me back in a moment at the end of this round we're going to join with a slip stitch and then we're going to decrease so chain one we're going to decrease to 14 stitches in this round so we're simply going to double crochet together all the way round so double crochet together making sure that you are working into that next stitch so don't mistake that stitch that you've just worked into as your next stitch you need to move over to the next one and you will end up with 14 stitches in this round so go ahead work your way round and then meet me back once you're ready 
Okay, so once you have done those 14 stitches, you're going to join with a slip stitch to your first stitch. And then we want to fasten off leaving a long tail end because we're going to use that to sew together. So we're going to take that out and then you need to grab a darning needle. So we're going to thread up our darning needle and then with the opening just here, we're going to go through the stitch where your last stitch is and then through the opposite side of the um, opening and you want to make sure that you've got a good catch on those stitches and you want to pull that through. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go through the opposite side of the opening and then through the opposite side of the opening and we're going to pull that through. To close that up. So we've created a nice little fold in our work. Now I would do this a few different times now that it's closed in order to make sure it's really secure. So I'll come back through this way and then back through this way. So we're almost creating an X. like so. I'm going to go ahead and fasten this off just so it's nice and secure. We'll make a knot in it so it's nice and secure. And then I'm going to add my pom-pom. So you can add a pom-pom um, with a button if you want to. So you can put a button on the inside of your work and then when your pom-pom has a loop you can just pull that through and loop it over for easy uh, washing so when you want to wash it you can take it off or you can bring your yarn through your pom-pom loop like so and pull it through but obviously this way you won't be able to remove when washing so it's totally up to you, totally up to your preference um, and how much you think you're going to be washing your hat. So when you sew it on this way, you want to make sure that you are doing it nice and securely. So I'm bringing the yarn back through and then I'm gonna go through the loop again Just so that I know that it's super secure. I'll bring this through. And then I'm going to secure. And then you can go ahead and weave in your ends. So for this, I use the rule of three so going one way, catching different fibres, going back the other way, trying to catch different fibres. You'll do this for about an inch to an inch and a half. And then finally, back the other way for an inch to an inch and a half. And then you've fully secured in your ends. Go ahead and snip that off. And all you have left to do is sew in the rest of your ends. So here we have the Truly Beanie. I've made it in two different colours here and it looks stunning in each colourway. I will have the PDF pattern available on my website. And if you'd like to make some matching wrist warmers, then you might want to check out this video here.